Hallelujah. We love Pastor Steve. Isn't the Lord so good? Yes. And you guys are good. Amen. It should be a congregational month. We appreciate you. And uh, I tell you, that's one of the things the Lord's just been really establishing and putting in my heart and my spirit. How appreciative I am of you people and uh, how precious you are to us. And, and I like our company. I like our group. I like our people. I like when we come together. I like the fellowship. I like the interaction. I love how you guys are just so receptive to the word. And uh, how many believe God's got even more for us? Yes. Amen. That's what we're believing, right? We're here. We thank God. He, he's just expanding, you know, where you are right now. How many believe God could take you further, farther, deeper than ever before? Hallelujah. And we are excited. Amen. And so how many need to hear a word from the Lord yes. today? Amen. 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 Jeremy, just put the first slide up. I'm about to say, grab it. Everybody say the word you need. How many know God wants to get the word to you more so than you want to get the word? I mean, God wants it. The word of God said he sent his word and directed that word to us and delivered us from our destructions. But we, you and I, as we're going to see today as we start to navigate through the scriptures, and we're all in faith this morning, right? We're trusting in the Holy Spirit to open our eyes. I mean, I got a lot of notes, but how many believe the spirit of God has a strategy how to get this out the best way? You know, it's almost like when you're having dinner. You don't have, which I do like it, having dessert first. But how many know the Lord can do that for you too, right? You have dessert first. But there's a way, there's a strategy of how to do these things. And the Holy Spirit is the only one who knows how to exactly do it. And we're trusting in the Spirit of God to open our eyes. And if you see something today, which I am believing by the Spirit of the Lord, you're going to have those moments where the Spirit of God's going to go, Oh, I see it. Oh, I'm getting it. I'm getting light. I'm getting direction. And you need to, and I need to, when you get something from the Lord, it is precious. Because the Word of God says, with the same measure that you measure, it'll be measured unto you. How you hear. And when you're hearing the Word of the Lord, this is not the Word of man. It is the Word of God. And we honor that Word. And as you're treasuring that Word of God, God will give you more. How many believe we can get more today? Everybody say, more and more and more and more. Look what it says over here in John, the 6th chapter, verse number 44. I just felt to to kind of just navigate here, and then we're going to go because it's so important. We thank God for the Holy Ghost. John 6, 44, and it says this, says, No man can come to me except the Father which sent me does what? Draws him. That word draws means to push, impel, to move, to draw. He said, nobody can come to him unless the Father draws him. Everybody say, thank God for the drawing of the Holy Spirit. And this is not just in any, just salvation. Sometimes we'll just take this and go, well, that just means salvation. Nobody can come to God unless God draws him. That is absolutely true. Sometimes we think we found God. God has been working on you and me for years. God's drawing us. How many have had that? When you're a kid, God spoke to you. There's things you heard in Sunday school. You're like, man, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. He's moving on you. But the cool thing about it is this. Not only is it for salvation, but when coming to God as healer, coming to God as our source and our supply for for meeting our needs, it's the Holy Spirit that draws us. Amen. And you're going to see this throughout your walk with the Lord. God is constantly drawing us to deeper waters. He's constantly drawing us to deeper revelation. He wants you to see it. It's just like the children of Israel. When they were in Egypt, they were slaves. They didn't own themselves. So what did God do? God began to reveal himself to them as deliverer. He began to show himself that, hey, I'm going to deliver you out of Egypt. With ten mighty signs of deliverance, he manifested that himself as the deliverer. But the very next thing that God revealed himself to them was when they came, they're going through the wilderness, they were thirsty, and they, went, they saw some water, and the waters were bitter. It looked like it was a good thing. It looked like the waters were refreshing, but the waters were bitter. And God said to Moses, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to get a a, a tree, a piece of a tree there, and put it in the water. Put the stick in the water. And he said, those bitter waters are going to be made sweet. And then he said, then he goes, and if you follow me, and if you keep my commandments and walk with me, he said, he said, he said, none of these sicknesses will be put on you. He said, for I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord who heals you. 
So he began to reveal himself to them as Jehovah Rapha. He said, listen, now that you're saved, there's a lot of areas in your life that are bitter. There's a lot of areas in your life that need to make, be made sweet. We need to get a revelation of God as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. How many are excited about that? Listen, God can take every bitter experience, anything that you and I have experienced by the cross, the cross of Jesus. When we apply the power of the cross, the power of the covenant, it turns that bitter water sweet, glory to God. Hallelujah. How many are excited about that? Yeah. And I've seen that over the years by the grace of God. I see in it that God is just constantly, by his mercy and his love, when there's an out in my life, when there's a shortage in my life, if there's a hurt in my life, God in his grace, he's speaking and he's drawing us truth to us. He's trying to reveal things to us. Everybody say, God, thank you for the truth. Now look at this, John the 8th chapter, verse number 30. How many are excited for the word? Because and we're going to just kind of, we're, we're, we're going to say a few things that we said last week. We're going to just navigate. But I'm going to believe just because you heard it doesn't mean you got it, right? And these are precious. Notice what he said there. He says, and he spake these words, and he said, many believed. You know, of course, here's Jesus. He's there. and you, you know, we see he's healing the sick. You know, multitudes are getting fed. And he's speaking the truth. And they're like, man, yo, yo, yeah, we believe. But notice what he goes on to say, verse number 31. He said, not only to the believers, he says, he said, then he said to those Jews that believed. He says, he got the crowd. A lot of people weren't believing. But then there was people that believed. And then he starts speaking specifically to the believer. He said, to those Jews which believed on him. He said, if. Everybody say, if. Yes. That means this is Conditional. Some people think, well, if God wants to just do it, why don't he just do it? God, whatever will be, will be. If it's God's will, it'll just happen. That is not true. The Bible says God is long-suffering, not willing that anybody should perish. There's many people that are perishing. What's the thought? You have to and I have to get a revelation and make that word personal to you. So when he says, he says, those that believe, if, if it's conditional, if you continue in the word. Why does he say that? Because you and I are going to have plenty of opportunity to continue in something else. The whole objective of what the enemy tries to do is to get you and I thinking on his thoughts. Thinking his way. He doesn't want us remaining, abiding, continuing in the word, living in the word, living by faith. He wants you and I to be living by sight. He wants you and I to be living by what we feel. He said, if you continue in my word, he says, what? You're what? You're my disciples. How I many know Jesus isn't just looking for believers? He wants disciples. Yeah. A disciple is somebody who laid down their life forsook all and made a commitment said Lord I'm following you you are my rabbi you are my teacher you are my Lord you are the one I'm following you when you were a disciple you left your road and you followed his road and this is where a lot of people have a lot of times a challenge in their relationship with God they want to do it my way you know and try to sprinkle God into their life how do you know it's not that? That's not how it works. You and I have to come to a place where we're coming and say, Lord, it's your way. Yes, sir. Whatever you want. Even if it costs you something. I was thinking the other day about the story of David when there was a curse on Israel. Because David started to number the tribes. He wanted to know how much army he had. And it was the devil deceived him and, and it, for some reason to, to want to think, how many people I have, how many um, soldiers I have, how much military I have. And, and, and the Lord didn't want him focusing on what he had. He always wanted him to focus on, hey, Dave, do you remember when you were a little kid and you didn't have anything and all those guys had spears? And he goes, you had a sling and a store, a stone, but you had the name of the Lord. That's all you need, right. David. Right. And when David opened that door to start looking to the arm of the flesh, all of a sudden it brought a national crisis on Israel. And there was a curse. People were dying. It was just horrible. And so God told David what he needed to do. He said, this is what you got to do to break this thing. And part of it was an offering. He said, you need to give an offering. And God told him specifically where to go, where to get it. 
and where to, have, uh, for, to, to offer the offering. And so he goes to the place where, the, where he's supposed to offer the offering, and somebody owns the land, and the guy goes to him and says, King and David tells him, says, I, I need this land. You know, I, I, I got to offer this to the Lord. I got to offer something. I got to do an offering. And the guy said, well, I'll give it to you. I'll give you. I'll give you whatever you want. I'll give you the land. And that seems like a good deal. Most of us would have said, well, that's really good. God gives us seed to sow. This is awesome. This is great. And it is. There is a truth to that. But David said this. He said, I will not offer unto the Lord something that doesn't cost me something. How many know sometimes you need to feel it? We sing that song, though there's pain in the offering. And sometimes when you and I are following the Lord, there's going to be times you're going to feel it. There's going to be the sacrifice of the praise. When you're making that decision. I remember when I was a kid and I got saved, you know, when I was 16. But I had a lot of friends, you know, hung out, you know, was a social person. And I, as soon as I got saved, I just knew I could not. It was like I saw it. And the Lord said, you can't hang out with those people that are smoking pot, drinking, carousing around anymore. You're saying, well, why? Are they bad people? No, no, we need to pray for them. But I knew if I hung out with them, before you know what I'd be doing with them. And I remember making a decision, Lord, even if I lost all my friends, even if they all thought I was crazy, I remember being in high school, I had a little, there's a picture in my, our yearbook that I had a picture of me, well, I used to carry around a little New Testament Bible. They had the, the New Testament and the Psalms and the Proverbs. And they had a little picture of me in there, you know? And they all thought I was crazy. But you know, in my heart, it was like, you know what, Lord? I am following you. And if it costs me all my relationships, all my friends, so be it. I'm going to forsake all. I'm going to follow you. And the cool thing about it was, over the years, God gave me opportunity to minister to some of those friends that I had. It opened some doors. Matter of fact, we, uh, we, do our, uh, we do these little spark videos. I don't know if anybody saw them. And again, I encourage you to watch them. If it blesses you, send them out, share them with her. They're just a minute little thing, you know. We take it from the sermon. And all of a sudden, I started getting, uh, there's this, this girl who started writing, and it was our neighbor. She was like one of, um, maybe you know Mark, as he's not here, uh, Deanne. De- from childhood, uh, she was uh, Ralph's, uh, Ralph's age, Deanne Cashier. <laughs> you remember, okay. And uh, her name's different, Deanne Garza, you know. And so Jordina, she was writing, saying, oh, you know. And I was, I was younger than her. She was, old, she was like my brother's, she was older. And she's writing there, and Jordina said, who's this person writing? It was nothing, nothing, you know, nobody, not flirty. Just praise the Lord, I'm so excited, you know. And I, I go, Jordan, who's that? I say, so I had to look it up. I go, oh, my goodness. And Jordan, she goes, hey, Michael, Mig. They called me Mig. I'm your neighbor. I used to live across the street from you. I love what you're doing. I came down here, went to school a little bit, and I'm like, keep going, you know? And I thought, wow, how cool is that? How cool is that? When we were kids, she wasn't, she wasn't saved. No, <laughs> Mark knows that there, you know. But the cool thing about it, you don't know. When you make a righteous commitment and you start following the Lord, God's going to interloop some of those things. And so everything that you think that you're losing, you're losing nothing, but you're gaining supernaturally. God's gaining things for you. He said, Jesus said, if anyone's left money, houses, family, all this stuff, he said, you're going to get a hundredfold in this life. Some of you think my family treated me bad, but I'll tell you what, when you get saved, you start getting a whole new family. The Bible says they're friends that stick closer than brothers, and it's wonderful, the spiritual connection that you have with family. So he says, if you continue in the word, everybody say me. I want you to see that you means you. (laughs) Right? You. You. Everybody say me. He said, you, he said if you, you, then you're my disciples indeed. Look at verse number. He said, then, then you'll do what? Everybody say, know the truth. Notice the word for truth. I want you to see it. He said, if you continue, that means you stay with it. You keep hearing it. You keep meditating. You keep reading it. How many feel that you've grown just over the past few years? It's like, man, I'm, getting, I'm seeing some more stuff. If you continue in the word, he said, you'll know what? The truth. Notice what the truth is. It means fact. You're going to know what real facts are. You're going to know the certainty, the reality, lying at the basis 
of an appearance, the, the manifested, veritable, uh, essential. And you're going to know that you're going to know the the essence of a thing. The nitty gritty, as Nacho Libre said, right? Anybody know Nacho Libre? The nitty gritty, right? You're going to know the nitty gritty, right? The core, the he said, you're going to know the truth. But I like the last part. It's what is true in any matter under consideration. When you and I continue in the word, no matter what's going on here, you get established inside of you that this is truth. But the doctors say, but no, this is truth. People say, it can't happen. But the word says, this is truth. The more you meditate on it, this becomes an exploding reality in your life. You see the truth. It explodes in you. All of a sudden you start going, I just can't talk the way I used to talk. When I got a revelation of confession, of speaking the word, speaking the confessing, my confession changed. I, would, I stopped saying, I'm an idiot, dumb, I, I don't know anything. I mean, we still correct each other. My wife will say, oh, I'm just, I'm silly. Oh, I, 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 no, don't say that, you're not silly. And if I say something stupid, I want her to correct me. But, I, but it's changed me. When I start thinking, I'm blessed, I'm called, I'm anointed, I'm a sheep, I hear his voice. The voice is stranger, I don't follow. He said, go back to the scriptures. He said, you're going to know what's truth under any uh, circumstance, right? Under, uh, any, under matter. And, and what's going to happen? And the truth, what, what's it going to do? It's going to make us free. But how many know it's personal? It's going to make who free? Is it possible that a lot of people hear things, but if they don't know it, they're not going to be free? Notice what the word free is. I want you to see it again, church family. How many love the word? Oh, we're getting it today. The word free means this, to be set at liberty. Is it possible that some of God's people are not at liberty? It means to not be under the control or in the power of another. Is it possible by not knowing the truth, you literally open the door that the devil can get a space in your life? Doesn't the word say in the book of Corinthians, he said, he said we're not ignorant of his devices lest he get an advantage on us? The word says, don't give a spot to the devil. He's seeking whom he may devour. When you and I know the truth, we realize I don't have to accept that. Hallelujah. And let me just say this. I've been wanting to say it all, all service because I know. Like if, some, if you were here today and all of a sudden a thought came in your mind, the offering bucket's passing and you're like, well, instead of taking, why don't, giving, why don't I just pretend I'm giving and take some money out? What would you do with that thought? You'd go, when you cast it out, you go, no, I'm, it's, <laughs> that, that's bad. Right? When you think that, I would. If a thought comes in your brain, all of a sudden you're like, you know, you're in the store and a thought comes to your mind and you go, and someone says, well, just take, they won't notice it, just take that, you know. Go over there and just eat a bunch of grapes as much as you want, just that you're sampling, you know. They won't know the difference. What do you do with those thoughts? Throw them out, Right? Somebody's smiling at you and you're a good Christian, you're married. I'll say, oh, what do you do? Go, no, no, no. But, my, but, I, but I want to. What do you got to do? How many temptation could be? A temptation's real. You're not being tempted if you're not being tempted. Right? If you, 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 there's no temptation. Like, if there's a, a temptation, there's something real. So we would throw those thoughts out. But here's, here's where we miss it sometimes. And, and this is where we got to get a, is if, if, if you start getting a cold, like a thought, you go, I do, I do. And what's the first thing? What, first thing you start saying, I'm catching a cold. I'm getting sick. And so already, what are you doing? You're opening that door. But a lot of us will sit there and say, well, sickness is not evil. It is evil. And the best time to stop it is as, as soon as it starts. I mean, uh, last week, last week, all of a sudden, my, my, my knee, right here, inside, I, 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 and I work out quite a bit, and I'm like, what is going on? I didn't bump it. Now, sometimes you can just tell when you bump it, you know, you know, you ever do that? You, you go, oh, dog, I bumped myself, and you go, oh, I got to bump it. I did nothing. I'm like, what is going on with my leg? I didn't say, I wasn't saying it, but I was feeling it. 
and I go to the gym and I'm like, wow. And these thoughts are coming, some sort of arthritis, and baritis. I mean, things are coming to my head. A torn leg, what, I mean, what happened? What's going on with this one leg? But the reality of the fact of the reality is this. I know the truth. And I know that I don't have to be under the power of another. Right? I, that I'm exempt from things. And the word exempt means free from obligation or liability imposed on others. Just because others are getting it, I'm not getting it. I know the truth that the word says, by his stripes we were healed. And I also know that the devil's trying to get a place... And what I need to do immediately is jump on it and speak to it. So we were walking out of the gym. I said, Jordana, I said, I just want you to agree with me because I'm talking to my leg now. How many of you got to talk to your mountain? You got to talk to your problem. You got to talk to the swelling. You got to talk to the cold. You got to talk to the inflammation. And I said, honey, watch. I'm going to speak to this thing here. I said, in the name of Jesus Pain, whatever you are, inflammation, I don't know what it is, but how many of you don't need to know what it is? Out, gone in Jesus' name. And then I spoke and I said, leg, you are normal. Leg, you are strong. Knee, perfect, normal in Jesus' name. You can ask her. We went to the gym in the morning and then by later on in the day, we were walking around some other place and I could feel it. It's already starting to change. And then by the very next day, you could ask her. I said, honey, I don't feel nothing anymore. It is totally, comp but what, 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 what happened there? Go back to the scripture. The fact of the matter is, I know by the grace of God, not that I know it all, but I know enough to go, wait a minute here. This is not God. This is not good. And I need to resist it now in Jesus' name. You're like, well, you're Pastor Michael. You got that cool, how do you like this? Is this okay, this trick? Jordana got this. I was a little like, I don't know, I feel like a beetle. <laughs> A monkey, come on, get happy. Partridge family. I mean, she, she did good. <laughs> she got it there. And I was like, a temp point. Well, that's, that's her. I, it's been sitting in my closet for a while. I kept looking at it. I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, I don't know. And, and I go, I don't know. So this last night I said, well, I'm going to honor my wife. I'm going to wear it. And I'm going to tell everybody. That was, and so she gets all the credit. I get none of it. Now I, I kind of like it now. I'm going to have to get some more. <laughs> But anyway, I feel, I really, I feel like a beetle, you know, you know, I look like a <laughs> Sergeant Pepper. Here I go. All right. All right. But, but he says, you shall know. He said, you, everybody say you, this is talking about you and me, you and I, this, what, what, you know, what you get a revelation for, you're going to, whatever truth you get, right? You know it, that truth, that truth. That's true all the time, no matter what's under consideration. That truth is going to liberate you. That truth is going to exempt you. And you're like, well, Pastor Michael, you're Pastor Michael. You can speak to those things. You can. He said, whosoever shall say to a mountain. Yes. Now you're like, well, I don't understand that. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm going to tell you, even though you might not understand it, the fact of the matter, it works. Just like the light bulbs. I don't understand the whole science behind light bulbs or how an air condition works, you know, all this stuff. But I know if I put the button on, it's going to work. Yes. You don't have to understand it totally, completely, entirely. But you need to get a revelation that that is for And you got power in the name of Jesus. And when that thought, that feeling, whatever it is, don't give a spot. You have to resist it. You have to be strong in the faith, withstand it, get against it, know in the name of Jesus. And sometimes you just got to keep telling them, you're gone in Jesus' name. I spoke to you. Yes. This, I, I, literally, I'll give you another example. Uh, in my, my car is not a new car. It's 2015. And it's a highly technical car. It's, it's, a, it's, a, tes it's, it's a Tesla. It's, it's very technical. And so it's got all this blah, 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 blah in it, okay? And I get updates. I get updates all the time. You know, they'll, they'll go, hey, got to get an update. And I go, oh, this is cool. I get another update. So, you know. But it's a 2015, so it's, you know, it's an older car. And probably about a couple months ago, there was a noise. And, and trust me, you know, how many know just fixing any car costs money? There was a noise when we had the air conditioner on. It was going, blah, 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 blah. It's just like, a, like a knocking there. Just funny, you know. I didn't like it, and I didn't want to have to pay to fix it. So, literally, I'm telling you, this is what I did. 
I spoke to you. You can ask me in Jordana. I spoke to that noise. I said, you are forbidden to make noise in my car in the name of Jesus. You must go. So it stopped. Every once in a while, that noise comes back. And when it comes back, I'll sit there and I'll say to it, you know I already spoke to you. You can't stay here. And you can ask her. We took a trip in the car. We didn't hear it. And if it comes back again, I'll speak to it again. And I'll tell it, I already spoke to you. So when you and I, when something's coming on us, you need to tell it in the name of Jesus. No, I don't accept this. Remember the story of Shama? They, 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 they planted a pea patch to, and it was harvest time. And they're ready to pick the pea patch. Remember, we've heard this story. I've shared it. And all of a sudden, the Philistines come. They're coming to take the, the pea patch. They're coming to get the harvest. And so all of Shema's friends, what did they do? They left. But Shema knew the truth. Shema knew the power of Jehovah. Shema said, you know what? I am not letting these Philistines take my harvest. He stood and he stood. He stood. The truth you know. He stood in the midst of that garden. And the Lord wrought a great victory. There's something powerful that happens when you and I take a stand. When you take a stand. It's more effective than when I take a stand for you. When you take a stand and say, no. Are you guys hearing me? Look at the scripture here. I want you to go with me. Let's go to Hebrews, the, the uh, third chapter. And we'll look at verse number uh, 15. And we'll just start reading on. And then we're going to go right to the fourth chapter. How many love the word? Phew, we're excited. I say, I can do it. And you're like, well, Pastor Michael, well, I spoke to it. It didn't happen. No, you just, you just, the Bible says, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, shall not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he saith, saith, shall come to pass. So when you speak to it, you speak to it. I command you, if it's a stuffed up nose, you say, in the name of Jesus, I command you, gone, in Jesus' name. You're like, Pastor, what do I, if I do if I'm, I'm still hawking away? You continue to keep your confession. I'm healed. My nose is clear. I've spoken to you. You have to go. Keep it always in the present tense that you got it, you've acquired it, and you're not trying to get it. Are you guys hearing me? Yes. You got to do it. You will say, well, Pastor Michael, will that exempt me from any trials or temptation? No. When you're fighting the fight of faith, you're going to get things. And how many know it's okay to be, to be in the middle of the storm? I remember this one time, this, this person had a problem. They, they were addicted to uh, cigarettes. They couldn't stop smoking. And so the preacher said, well, here's what I want you to do. He said, every time you light up that cigarette, just say, I am free from nicotine, from the cigarettes, and I don't desire them anymore. And so he says, what, should I just stop smoking? No, just keep your confession, start speaking it. I'm free. Mm, I love that. Don't say that. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> this went on for some time. The guy thought he was crazy. But after a period of time, before you know it, he went... And what you need to be speaking, whatever's going on in your life, if it's your wallet, if it's your bank account, if it's your house, it's your kids, you don't want to be speaking, this car is a piece of junk, this house is a piece of, you need to be proclaiming your faith. Yes. 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 You need to wake up in the morning, and if you're full of pain, you need to say, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Every extremity of my body is functioning as it's purposely designed to function. My heart is beating normal. I am strong. My blood flows normal. It's normal in Jesus' name. I'm strong. And don't let the devil tell you and deceive you into thinking that you have to die sick. I'm not dying sitting down or laying down. I've already decreed that. Unless I choose it, I'm going to die strong and standing. And who cares where I fall at that point? What happens to my body? I'm out of there. So if I bump my head, I'm, I'm gone. If, I, if the Lord takes me right now, how cool is that, you know? 
Just wait, we'll wait a while. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere, right? That's right. I feel like I, I feel like there's so much more as pastors, and we just want more. We're just thanking the Lord for great grace and more. And, and uh, but but you don't have to die sick. The devil will try to tell you, well, that's how, how else are you going to die? Your spirit just needs to leave your body. But the whole culture that we live in is you're going to die sick. You know, your hereditaries or what's going on in your DNA. You know, if your parents had heart problems, that's what you're going to have. They had cancer. Now, I understand there is a science behind it. That is a truth. But it's not the truth under all consideration is that word truth is. Go back to that word for truth. The word truth means... It means what is true in any matter under consideration. Yes, there is a truth to, yes, DNA and science and all that stuff, but we live by a higher truth that I am free from every, every hereditary sickness, every hereditary disease. I am exempt from that. Yeah. And you and I, you got to fight this thing. You got you to go. And you're like, well, Pastor Mark, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It seems like, what are you talking? You're talking crazy. When you're walking by faith, you're not walking. It doesn't make any sense. When Elijah said to, to, the, to, to, the, to the king there, Jezebel, what's, what was the king's name? Jezebel's husband. Ahab, thank you. And he said to him, he said, he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. I mean, when you're living by faith, you're decreeing, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, come and I'm, and you got to be strong in that. Speak to your liver, speak to your lung, speak to your kidney and say strong and normal. Resist it, resist it. Resist poverty, resist lack, resist discouragement, resist fear. Whew. All right, go back to the scripture, my dear friend. He says, while it is said today, what's the next word? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody say if. Yeah. I mean, there's a choice. Some of you have already like, eh, I'm already tuned out of pastor. Eh, eh, eh. Nobody, I don't, want to, I don't want to hear this again. It's almost like somebody, you know, they go to the gym. I want to get in shape. And they don't want to hear. They don't want to hear. Here's some barbells. There's a treadmill. This is going to be funny. So we're at this hotel. We're on the 10th floor, room number 10. Okay? So it was Thursday. We're like, oh, you know, it's like, oh. And I told my wife, it was noisy. How many know sometimes home is better, you know? Yeah, the air conditions were in the room, and it was, just, it was loud, and it was beautiful. Don't get me wrong. We were very blessed. And um, so we're, you know, all of a sudden, the nighttime's there, and it's about 8.30. And all of a sudden, it's like, bah, 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 bah. Like, what in the world is this? And they're like, there is the fire alarm is, is, is on, and uh, fire's, act, been fire's been detected, and don't use the uh, um, stairwell. No, don't use the elevator. Use the stairs. So I looked at my wife. I said, well, so I grabbed my wallet, grabbed my car keys. I said, a few things I put in my pocket. I said, go, let's go. So I'm going. I, I have these, uh, I had the, not flip-flops, these the shoes, what do they call them? It just kind of went over you like that, you know? You put your feet in them. And so I got that. And my wife, my wife puts her sneakers on. And so she's like just dillying and dallying. And I'm, we're on the 10th floor. We're on the 10th floor. I was getting the iPad. You see so, 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 this is my story. You can tell them all, all, you can tell all your lady friends on Sunday or Saturday. So, so all of a sudden I'm going now, I'm going, I'm going down those stairs. And, and there, there was, there was a, and there, there's people there in my way. And I, I really, like, I, 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 listen, you, this, you got to get, they're like, and I'm starting to move and I'm going down the stairs. I'm there. And I look up, my wife is two floors above me. And she's like dilly dallying, and I had to slow down. I'm like, oh my goodness, here. <laughs> so I slowed down a little bit, and I started hustling down the stairs again. I said, okay, okay, come on, let's get going. And I told her, I said, baby, I, all that stepper I do, all that gym and I do, it was a blessing to me. I was flying down those stairs. Hallelujah. What's the moral of the story? Get to the, do something, move. You never know if you're on the 10th floor. 
I might have, I literally had to slow down. I'm like, come on, come on. And I'm thinking, <laughs> if she, if she, be honest with you, if she, she was going to be like, well, when you save her, I, I, well, I had to find, I had to, I had to lay the land for, I was, I was, I, I was down the stairs really quick. And then I was like, well, I want to make sure there's no fire. I want to make sure I can get out. Then I'll go back and try to help some people. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, we're, you're just like, and I'm like, I'm hearing this thing, ah, 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 get out of the building, get out of the building. <laughs> so we go into the car, and my car, you know, it has like Netflix on it, so or whatever, so we started watching, and we're waiting for the fire department to come, you know. Like, they they got to come, the, the alarm went. The lady told Jordana when we were walking, she said, tell the fire department's on the third floor, okay. So we're sitting out in the car, and people are out there, and they tried to go back in the building, and they went, Ah, 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 ah. It went off again. This is like three times we we're sitting outside, and what happened? So I looked at my wife. I said, "Sweetie, this couldn't be a long night." <laughs> I said, "We're not that far from home." I really, you know. So to her, she got in the room. My wife went into packing mode. So she's immediately getting the, everything packed and everything like this. And but you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to spend the night here. But in my heart, I'm like, these air conditions were a little loud for me. You know, I'm like, I'm ready. To, and so all of a sudden, we just about ready to get back in the bed, and all of a sudden, like, ah, 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 and now it's like 9.30. Oh. I said, she had all, everything all packed. So we had these two big duffel bags <laughs> over clothes, and she had her thing, and I got those things, and I was flying down those stairs. <laughs> it's amazing what a little adrenaline will do for you. <laughs> and she, she picked up her step that time, because I told her, I said, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> if these people are gonna dilly dally. It's you know, I, mean, I got to get out, right? right? Zip, 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 zip. I got, I got, I got living to live. You know, I got some. <laughs> it's a good story, isn't that fun? But Jordana did good. But but the point of the matter is, even if you, even if you're like, well, Pastor Mike, I can't get out of stepper. Wherever you are right now, start doing something. You know, well, I'm trusting God to heal my body. Move, breathe. Take a walk. Yes. Start moving, please. Remember that story. If not, whenever you go to a hotel, get the first floor. <laughs> we were on the 10th floor and it was high up. There's no way I could jump out the window. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it, was, it was so high, you know. But move. Yes. Yes. Exercise is good. The Bible says it profits little. Do something. Move. Walk. Breathe. Talk. Do something. They got it? <laughs> you're like, well, Pastor, I'm too old. No, you're not too old. Get moving. Find some people. Start walking. Get out there. Do something. It's now the cooler weather is coming. Start moving. And then believe God for the, when the hot weather comes, get yourself a uh, treadmill. I know God can bless you with a treadmill. Do something. My father was 87 years old. And Mark, my brother-in-law is there. My brother Gino used to go, because dad's driving me crazy. I'm like, what? What's the matter? He said, every night he's on the treadmill. And if he's not on the treadmill, he's walking back and forth in the house. Right? You got to keep moving. God, and that's, that's my plan right to the end. Get, get yourself a bike. Do something. Do something. You say, what's it, how spiritual is this? It is spiritual. You got to do something. And if not, remember the story. She knows it now. She knows it. If she doesn't get her you know, going, she'd be like, yeah, my husband, he was on the third floor. I'm still on the ninth floor. And I'll be like, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Come and save me. Oh, man. A... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, what you can do yourself, do it yourself. Yes. What Jesus told Judas, what you must do, do quickly. Yes. <laughs> right? Do it. All right, let's just get through some more of this. This is fun. He said, today, if you will what? How many are hearing his voice today? Yes. Right? Because God's speaking to you. God loves you. God's drawing. He says, what, when you're hearing his voice, what should you not do? Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Look at verse number 16. He says, for some, everybody say some. some. Everybody say Some. some. When they heard, what did they do? They, they provoked. They pushed back. He said, how not be it all that came out of Egypt by Moses? Look at verse 17. 
He says, but with whom? Everybody say, whom? whom? Again, it's very specific here. It's talking about individuals. He's talking about, even though they're all God's people, God wanted them all to go into the promised land. He's talking about certain ones. He said, with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? It wasn't everybody. It was the ones that were pushing back. They weren't listening. Look at verse 18. He goes on to say, and to whom? Again, it's whom? It's an individual. Everybody say, not me by the grace of God. He swears that they, that those people should not enter into his wrath, but to them that what? Didn't believe not. They didn't believe. Look at verse 19. So we see they, those unbelievers, those that were pushing back, those that refused to hear, those that were refused to change. He said, they could not enter in. Why? Because of unbelief. Everybody say, by the grace of God, not me. Now, verse number one of chapter four, this is all continuing here. It's not like they, Paul was writing in chapter and verse. He says, we under, he says so let us. He's writing to New Testament people now. He goes from the Old Testament story and says, they, there are certain ones that didn't get in. There are certain ones that didn't enjoy. They weren't blessed. They didn't get there. He said, so we should fear. We should fear a promise being left us of entering into his rest. And if any of you should what? Seem to come short of it. He's writing to us. Is it possible? We live in a time... Where so many people say, well, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, you're just blessed, 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 blessed. No matter what. No matter what. Doesn't matter. It does matter. Why would he say this? Right. Now, we know we're blessed. We know that we're uh, free. We know that God's... But, but it's still the principle applies. He said, let us fear that there's a promise. What promise? By his stripes we're healed. What promise? That God's the source and the strength of your life. What promise? That God's peace is on you. What promise? That he directs you and leads you. What promise? That he supplies all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What promise? Is it possible that we can be left short of it? The promise of, hey, we got authority. We can speak to mountains. We can tell storms to stop. We can, we can, we can manipulate the atmosphere by the grace of God. He said, whatever you and I fix on earth will be fixed in heaven. Whatever we bind, whatever we lose. He said, let us fear, lest a promise being left us that any of us should seem to come short. Look at the word for short, slide number five. Oh, who wants to come short? And this is what happened to them. They were right at the brink. They could smell the milk and the honey. They could see the grapes, but they fell short. What does it mean? You came late, you're tardy, you missed it. You failed to be a partaker. You're left behind in the race. You failed to reach the goal. You fall short. You're inferior. You're lacking. Is that God's will for any of us? Well, why doesn't it just happen for everybody? Look and go back to the scripture. He said, we should fear. That's good, right? Lest any of us entering into his rest. This, this blesses me. Because, man, a thousand can fall here, 10,000 here, but it won't come nigh me. That's right. Yeah. Right? This blesses me that, that even though the crowd could be missing it, but we can be like Joshua and Caleb. Yes. We can still get in. Yes. Maybe you've got to wait 40 years for God to align something, but we can get there. Yep. Well, well, everybody's doing it. I don't care what everybody's doing. I'm staying with the word. <laughs> he said, lest any of us should fall short, short of it. How sad. Like that one thing, come lady, come, come tardy. Right? Go back to this definition. I just want to see it again. He said, to come late, tardy. What does it mean? Got to be with it. Who would want to come tardy? To their healing of cancer. You almost were there. It was going in the right direction, but you just missed it. This means you gotta start quick right now. Whatever God's telling you, you gotta jump quick. Go back to the word, my friend. 
Somebody said, well, cancer. Oof. And I know well, all of us in this room, in some way or another, we know people that have been affected by cancer. And it's ugly. And it's bad. It's, but it's not bigger than God. I heard one brother say at one time, he said, what's worse than cancer? He said, the fear of cancer. Are you guys hearing me? Yes. He says that any of you should seem to come short. He says, of it, come short, come short. Look at verse number two. He said, for unto us was the gospel, the gospel word gospel means good news, preached, and good news, good news was, is preached unto them as well. He said, but the word, the word, the good news preached didn't profit them. Why? Because God was picking and choosing. Who gets blessed and who doesn't get blessed? Some get it and some don't. What kind of God would that be? Oh, Lord, I know you can heal, but I don't know if it's your will to heal, Lord. So, Lord, whatever your will is. And God goes, he shakes the, the ball <laughs> and goes, not your lucky day. <laughs> shake it again, Lord. Shake it again. <laughs> what, what, kind of, what kind of confidence? What kind of, what kind of God would that be? We either have to believe God is good all the time or... Next person comes in line. Like a Caesar, you know. For unto us the gospel was preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. It wasn't mixed with faith. Look at these words. I want you to see prophet mixed, and we'll just look at the... Said, actually, let's look at the word faith first, Jeremy. Slide. Said The word wasn't mixed with faith. With an assurance, certainty, conviction, a firmly held belief. Like, I got it. This is it. This is faith, faith, faith. Firmly held belief. He said, the word didn't profit them, not mixed with faith. Look at the word for slide number uh, six, Jeremy. The word profit means that the word, the good news, didn't assist them. The good news wasn't useful. Isn't that a shame when you think, how could God's word not be useful? Or God's word not be advantageous? Or God's word not benefit? They said the word didn't profit them. Didn't profit. It was no use to them. No advantage. Why? Because it wasn't mixed with faith. It wasn't united one thing with another to mix together, to absorb, combining the word with faith. When you say, I believe, when you say, yes, Lord, when you activate your faith, that's when the word becomes powerful to you. Hallelujah. Yes. Can I just give you one more thought? We'll, we'll, we'll close with this story here because I know I'm going a little longer than I normally do. Or, but I just want you to hear this. I just want you to see this. And we've heard this before, but um, it's over in Acts, the 14th chapter, Jim. Where be it? And I think it starts at verse number seven. I think it's verse seven. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And so Paul and Paul is, they're preaching the word, they're preaching the gospel. They're preaching the gospel. They're, they're preaching the word. They're, they're preaching the good news. Just like this. And so look at verse number eight. <laughs> and he says, and, and, and while they're preaching the good news, there was a certain man. Everybody say certain. It wasn't everybody, but it was one man. And he, he couldn't walk. He was impotent. At his, being a cripple from his mother's womb, he never walked. So Paul's preaching the good news. Some people think the gospel is just healing or salvation. But the gospel means healing, deliverance, protection, yeah. prosperity. So Paul's just laying it out on good. He's preaching it. And he's preaching, hey, Jesus not only took your sins, but he took your sickness. That by his stripes, you were healed. The same way that he, he took your sins, he took your sickness. He took it so that you don't got to take it. And so this guy is sitting there. He's hearing the word. What happens when you hear the word? 
faith comes. He's starting to get a confidence. Hey, God wants me healed. I can be healed. I don't have to be sick. I can walk. Look at verse number nine. The same, that same, look at these words, same, certain. In other words, it was that individual, the same. This guy heard Paul speak. Speak what? The good news. God loves you. God wants you well. You don't have to, you don't have to carry that anymore. You don't have to have that emotional baggage anymore. You can be free. Jesus took it, so you don't got to take it. And Paul, while he's talking, he's looking, and he's beholding this guy, and all of a sudden, and he, he saw, there was his, his, he had faith, and the Lord revealed it to him that he had faith to be healed, yes. that it was perceptible. He could just look out. You know what some of the characteristics of faith is? Is joy and peace. Yes. When you start to hear something, the good news what does good news do for you? You go, hey, everybody, it's good news. You just won the lottery last night. One point, blah, blah, billion. You go, you're not going to go. What, what would you do? You go, woohoo, <laughs> glory to God. Shoo, glory to God. Yes. I could buy me a parasail. So if I'm ever in a hotel room high up like that, I'll just fly out. <laughs> we do like, we bungee jump, pick Caleb, right? <laughs> Repel down the wall, you know, hey. Got money. What would you do, right? Well, good news, when you hear the good news, ah, wow, God loves me. I don't have to be sick. So he was getting it. Paul looked at him. This was a certain man, the same man heard Paul speak. Paul looked at him and he says, He's got faith to be healed. He's all like, mm, like Gina smiling. Oh, this is good. This is good. Well, that, I mean, no, that's, that's, that's part of the process. But notice that verse number 10, Paul said to the guy, Stand up right on your feet. And he leaped and he walked. How many of you can have faith to be healed and not be healed? You can have faith that God will prosper you and not prosper. What do you got to do? You have to activate your faith. Now some of you, you got stirred up this morning when I was talking about Speaking to your problem, standing against it. You see, when you heard me talk about my leg, you're like, I should do that. If it works for this guy that looks like a beetle today, it'll work for me. I'm dressed better than him, glory to God. <laughs> right? Right? You, you can sit here all day and say, hmm, I, I might have to try that, you know? No, 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 no. What you want to do is immediately release and activate your faith. We're going to give you an opportunity this morning to do just that. What I want you to do, if there's a part of your body, whatever it is, if there's inflammation, if there's whatever it is, or, or if, if, it's, if it's somebody, maybe you're like, well, Pastor Michael, I got financial issues. What you need to do, you need to speak over your wallet. You need to just look up and say, wallet, checkbook, money come to me in Jesus' name. You need to speak it. You're saying, well, should I just pray about it? No. Sometimes there's praying, but then there's saying. So you need to speak to it, just like I did. I didn't ask the Lord to heal my leg. I spoke to the mountain. I said, no, and then I forbid you. Stop it now in Jesus' name. And this is what I want you to do right now, wherever you are. If you got that faith inside of you and you got stirred up right now, you can do it. You don't got to yell like I'm yelling. But you can just say it in the name of Jesus. I declare over my body, I command, I command it right now. This sinus infection, gone in the name of Jesus. This tiredness, gone in the name of Jesus. Then you begin to declare the, de the decree of God. Say, yes, yes, my no not nostrils, you are clear. Nostrils, you are clear. Phlegm and throat, gone, gone, phlegm, gone in Jesus' name. Why don't you just do it right now? Speak it over. Speak it. Activate your faith. Got to do it. Well, Pastor, I want you to do it for me. You can do it. You can speak it right now. The Bible says, Thou shalt decree a thing, and it'll be established to you. And light will shine on your path. There's something about you decreeing it. Speak to your organs. Body, normal, in Jesus' name. I speak to my kidneys, functioning normal, in Jesus' name. I speak to my liver. Liver, you function normal in Jesus' name. Heart, you are normal. 
Do y'all just want to just go through the body a little bit with me? Let's just do it right now. Say some of these here. See, heart, normal, in Jesus' name. Blockage, gone, in Jesus' name. Arteries, clear. Blood, flowing normal. Blood, blood pressure, normal, in Jesus' name. High blood pressure, gone. Go, leave my body. In Jesus' name. Joints. I speak to you now. Pain, inflammation, gone. In Jesus' name. Mind. Fogginess, go. Forgetfulness, go. I speak to you, mind. I speak to you, brain. I declare normalcy over you. No dementia. You cannot be a part of me. Finances. I speak over my wallet. I speak over my bank account. I speak over my property. And I say, devil, get your hands off my property, off my finances. You are cursed. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And I speak abundance. I speak wellness. I speak fullness. I speak prosperity over me. There's some of you that just seem like you don't know what to do. You're in the path of confusion. You need to say it right now. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke this confusion of not knowing what to do. This indecisiveness. I curse you, command you to go in Jesus' name. And I speak light over my path. I speak, I know what to do. I speak, I'm a sheep of God, that I hear his voice and the voice of a stranger I do not follow. I declare freedom over every aspect of my life. And I, I declare exemption that what's opposed on others, the liabilities and obligation on others doesn't come nigh me. I'm free. I know the truth. I know the truth. I know the truth. And I'm free. 